Hello everyone, we'll be making bounce pads that even let you customize the relationship with specific actors if you'd like one to bounce higher or to not bounce at all. And they can also work when rotated. Like so. Alright, let's get started and create our blueprint class for the bounce pad. Then right click blueprint class actor. Call this bounce pad blueprint. Open that up. And in here, we're going to add two things. We're going to add a box collision. Oops. Box collision. And I'm also going to add a static mesh. So the box collision is going to be for detecting that our player is in the area of the bounce pad. And then the actual static mesh is how we're going to know when the player has actually hit the bounce pad. So I'm going to use a cylinder here. This is available in the third person project. I'll just scale this down and maybe scale this out like this. And I'm going to scale this box up here like so. That should be fine. Um, on this box collision, I think everything should be good here. Overlap all dynamic. So for the mesh, block all dynamic should be fine. And we're going to generate hit events. So if we scroll down here on the static mesh, we'll do on component hit. And this event basically will fire any time this mesh gets hit. Um, and we're also going to go to our box collision. Uh, same area, except we're going to do on component begin overlap and end overlap. And basically what these are is, if you see the camera here, begin overlap would be when I enter, and then end overlap when I exit. Alright, so we don't need all this up here. I'll just delete this. Oh, delete. Okay. Uh, so here on begin overlap, I'm going to create a new variable of a boolean. This is going to be in vicinity. And I'm just going to set this to true on begin overlap. And if you want to know how you can quickly do that, you can drag out your variable, hold alt, and release left click. And on end overlap, we're going to do false. <clears throat> Okay, next we can go to our hit event. Or I guess I'll explain what's going on. We're, we're basically setting a variable here that we can check uh, later just to make sure that we're in the vicinity and so that when we hit the bounce pad, we can make sure that uh, we're, you know, it's a good time to uh, bounce. Um, so on the hit, we're going to do a branch. We're going to connect this up. And we're going to do in vicinity. Basically, how this helps is if you have your collision, you can make it so that... So, like, if I shrink this, I only want you to be able to bounce if, like, you came from the top of the bounce pad. Because the hit event will generate if you hit, like, even the sides here. So, making sure that... <clears throat> you were on the top is kind of what this is for and it'd probably be even better if we use like a sphere collision uh, but just for the tutorial I'm just gonna use a box anyways back to the hit event uh, so yeah we got our branch here in vicinity and with this we're gonna do off of true here we are gonna need our other actor and from there, we're going to cast to the character. We'll just do cast to character. Connect this up. And basically, it's as easy as uh, calling a launch character. And you can input your velocity here. So I'll do a thousand. Compile. Save. 
and I'll just do Z override here. Okay, so if I drag this into the level, like so, and I click play, and that's basically how you can create a, a bounce pad. Um, but if you want to get a little bit more advanced, let's say you have a couple bounce pads and you want, um, let's say this is the female mannequin and when she would jump on it, you don't want anything to happen, but you want another character when they jump on it, um, you do want them to jump and you can even customize, um, their jump velocity. Um, so to do that, we are going to need to do a few things. We are going to go down here to our variables and we're going to do actor relationships, actor velocity, and we're going to go in here and we're going to set these to actor of a class reference on both of these and we'll go over here to our details panel and on the variable type we're going to create this into a map for both of them and we're going to want a different secondary variable so on the relationships we want this to be a boolean and on actor velocity we'll want this to be a vector so you can compile and save so in here we could create new ones and how a map works is this uh, field has to be set to something else because whenever you create a new one it's going to be none but this is already none so it's going to get kind of confused uh, so i'll just do third person character and here i could make it so false or true i'll put it to false so i can show how that works later and same with the uh, velocity, uh, we could do third person character, and we could do a thousand. Okay, so how do we use this? Uh, let's create two functions. We're going to do find actor relationships, or relationship, and find actor velocity. Let's do the velocity one first. So in here, we're going to need a input, uh, create that. We're going to set this to actor of a object reference. So we'll do, I don't know, call it instigator. It doesn't really matter what you call it. Um, so from here, we're going to get its class. And now we can drag out, we get this is velocity. So we'll drag out actor velocity and there's a cool little function you can do find and so we can drag the class into here and this is basically going to find the class of the actor and um, it's basically going to find its corresponding value which is pretty cool uh, but let's say this fails we're going to use a select here and we're going to use the, um, the boolean return value here as the index here and if it's true we did find this class we we'll use this value and on false uh, let's create a new variable so you can drag out of this promoted variable we'll call this default bounce velocity okay I'm just gonna organize this really quick all right so and I'm gonna drag all this down now we can create a return node, connect these together, and we can simply drag our return value into this return node. And we are going to set this function to pure. So quick recap, what's going on? Uh, we're getting the actor, we're getting its class, and then we're gonna try and find the uh, velocity uh, if we do find it, we'll use the velocity we found. If not, we're going to use the default variable we have. Okay, that's done for that function. We're going to do something very similar in the finite relationship. 
uh, we're going to add another input. And if you did it correctly and you create a new input, it should just automatically be an actor with an object type. I'm um, going to call this instigator again. Doesn't matter what you call it. And we're going to do a very something very similar. Drag out our relationships. Find. Same thing. Get class. I'm going to plug this into the find. Okay. And we're going to do select. And you'll notice there's two booleans here. Um, that's because the value of our map is a boolean. Um, but this one here at the bottom is the result of the find node. And this up here is the value. So we want to drag the bottom one into here. Um, if we found something, we'll use this. And then we'll drag out the false and we'll promote it to a, promote it to a new variable. Default bounce relationship. Let's compile and save really quick. And we're going to create a return node again. And we're going to drag out our return value. And we're going to set this to pure again. All right, awesome. And for our default bounce relationship, I'm going to set this to true. This basically means if we don't find uh, an actor, this will be our default. Okay, cool. So now how do we use this in our bounce pad? Uh, pretty simple. We can just drag out our functions here. And on our instigator, we're going to use the other actor. So we'll move this branch over here. And we're, actually, we're actually going to create another branch. And we're going to plug the true into this one. And for the condition, we're going to use this function's return value. Cool. So... Um, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. And off of true here, we're going to go to our cast the character. And then, uh, same thing, instigator, other actor. And then we can plug our velocity in there. All right. So our default bounce velocity, we set this to 1000. Very cool. All right, I'm gonna organize these variables really quick. In vicinity, I'm just gonna set this to state information. And actor relationships, I'm gonna put this into parameters. Actor velocity into parameters, and you can actually drag these into groups like that. And I'm gonna drag these last two default values into the parameters as well. And if you wanna make it so that you can change these variables in the scene, like in this area, we can basically go to all of these variables and do instance editable and expose on spawn. Like so. Very cool. And that should be that. So we go into the scene here. You will now see in the details panel we have all these parameters. So, um, if you see, if we go into level, we try to bounce, it's not gonna work. And the reason that it doesn't work is because in our actor relationships, we left this uh, relationship to false. So that means whenever we try and bounce on it, uh, it won't let us. Uh, but if we set it to true here, and we click play, voila, it works. And you can even see the custom velocity here. We set this to 2000, and we click play. Bing. So yeah, and if we delete these, so we don't have any specified velocity for a specific actor, and we click play, it's just going to do the normal one we had because it's going to default to our, well, our default velocity. Okay, I actually wanted to add something to this. Um, I want to make it so that any which way this is rotated and you hit it, it's going to launch you accordingly. So to do that, uh, we don't really need to do much. We can just get our actor rotation and we're going to get up vector and we're going to do multiply and we're going to plug this into our launch velocity and here we're going to split the structure pin and we're going to split the actor velocity here. We're going to drag this into Z. 
like so. That should be good. So now if we go into the game. It will now bounce us that way. Or not. What the heck? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, reconnect the shark pin and drag the Z into here. Okay, there we go. It'll work now. Bing! Very cool. Bing! And we can show you. A reset the rotation. Bing! Very cool. And I'll put it this way. Oh yeah, well, there you go. Alright, thanks for watching everyone. Uh, I have a Discord server for artists and game developers. Feel free to join if you need help with your projects or you just like to chat. And as always, thanks to my patrons. And have a great day and or night. Bye.